Um, I want to introduce uh, our next guest for Fireside Chat with Sean Black. Sean is the CEO and co-founder of Knock, a real estate technology company that has morphed into what some in the industry are calling power buyers. Um, Sean started his first business at 15. He was a contractor at 15. Um, he earned an MBA from Babson, Babson College outside Boston and worked for three years as vice president for Shark Tank Star. Um, prior to founding Knock in 2015, Sean was, the found, was on the founding team at Trulia, which used to be a perennium here at, uh, at uh, Nari. Um, he was spearheading the growth and revenue division. Um, at the start of the year, Knock was operating in fewer than 20 markets, um, but hoped to reach 75 markets by the end of next year. No, no, this year. No, no. <laughs> I thought it was a missed the month. Sorry, sorry. You, you, you hope to reach 75 markets, you're now in 72 markets. All right, thank you. You're ahead of schedule, right? I am, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, officially known as Knockway, Knock has raised over 600 million in equity and debt, and March, Knock hired Goldman Sachs to explore the possibility of going public. Um, in October, um, Inman's Innovator of the Year title was split three ways between uh, Tim Heil of Homeward, um, Shaival Shaw of Ribbon and Sean Black of Knock. So, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for, um, having, Jeff. Thanks for having everybody. I was told the mic is sensitive, so I'll try not to hurt his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you'll hear me though. <laughs> so, we're here to talk about the transaction revolution. What is the transaction revolution? Uh, so, I have a couple of visual aids. I promise it's, just, it's all pretty kosher. You know, I think it's important to know where we are at a point in time of like where real estate is and the journey of going online. Um, my co-founder Jamie and I were both on the founding team at Trulia. He ran Yahoo Real Estate back when it was one of the big three portals. And we sort of think about where we are in real estate like this. And there, there's sort of an evolution. My, my co-founder Pete at Trulia uh, came to say sometimes revolutions come in evolutions and for sure Real estate, finance, healthcare are those kinds of industries that it takes a long time, as opposed to you know uh, books uh, that Amazon was able to put online pretty fast. So I think if you look at where we were, the early 2000s were really about a digital revolution. It seems like a lot of us were around then. To know that it was just really taking classified ads out of the newspaper or the MLS book, the old school MLS books, and putting them online. It was pretty one dimensional. You didn't get any context around those listings. Uh, and I think the sort of category killer at the time was Realtor.com. Uh, run by uh, Alan Dalton at the time. Uh, anybody remembers that far back? I think, you know, Julia came along in 2005, and what we observed was there was no context around those listings. There was no sold, by the way, at the time, Miller was not allowed to show sold comps on Realtor.com, and anyone to forbid them from doing it. It was really just listings that got you immediately to a real estate agent. And so we came along and put all kinds of context around the listings. We got our listings from uh, directly from brokers and agents so that we didn't have to. Uh, observe the MLS rules, which required or limited all the other data around the listings. Um, and then Zillow came in with his estimate about a year later. And I think together we sort of revolutionized the buy side uh, transaction. We democratized all the data that consumers need to make the biggest purchases of their lives, and they would otherwise be, 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 um, be very limited and uh, dependent on real estate agents to in get basic information, get a login to the MLS, and get data. Um, by the way, it wasn't good for the real estate agents either because they spent a lot of time educating consumers for months and months and months who may or may never, you know, transact. Now, obviously, a consumer has more information than they could ever want um, and comes in later. But it did that revolution, you know, which lasted from 2005 to 2015 when Trillian Zillow merged, um, once March Nemesis, uh, and then got, you know, merged together, um, where that was 300 million, well, on those two sites alone, 200 million unique visitors a month. Uh, but it didn't do anything for sellers. Sellers already had distribution from uh, you know, all real estate, Yahoo Real Estate, Realtor.com. What it did was give better information to buyers, um, but it didn't give sellers any more transparency and any more convenience, certainly no more cost savings. Real estate commissions back in 05 were 60 billion a year. We predicted a couple months ago that this year real estate commissions will be 100 billion for the first time ever, uh, and it's only going to climb from here. Uh, which is fine because there's a fee and there's value in what agents do, but the rub is that, they, that consumers aren't getting any more convenience, any more transparency. There's still a lot of hands in the till. There's still a lot of confusion about what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. There's a lot of uncertainty. 
And that's where we started uh, in 2015, Jamie and I, to sort of like at a high level democratize the sell side of the transaction the way we did uh, the buy side at Metrolia and the real estate. Um, and, and Open Door was right there, sort of starting the iBuyer um, phenomena. All of us collectively just trying to fix a very broken transaction. And I think the difference between the last revolution and this one is that the last one was really about data marketplaces where we weren't involved in the transaction. So besides low offers for MNN, which was their attempt to do that. Uh, so now, in order to really affect change in the transaction, these platforms like ours are all verticalizing the transaction and trying to break down the friction and make the process streamline, give the consumer transparency, convenience, certainty, uh, and ultimately for us at least cost savings. So the term power buyer, I guess is, is a term of art, I, I think Mike Dupree, uh, the um, analyst at the University of Colorado in Boulder, coined that Mike, phrase. Yeah. Um, but um, basically it's, uh, if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong, you're, um, helping the, the person who's buying a home, um, buy the home, and then you transition them into a mortgage and how you, you sell, if, he, if he's trying to sell and buy, it's you sell before you buy, or you, um, you, you know what, I messed up the slide. There's a the backup. Okay, so this is the backup right there. Okay. I, I just, I want to give context to this, right? So, so I think before talking about what we do, I, I think we want to sort of talk about the problem that we solve. When we started Trillia in 2005, there were 50 million unique visitors on the top three sites. Only one of them is the same, Realtor.com. The other two were Matt Real Estate, Beyond Real Estate. And there were five million houses bought and sold. And our hypothesis in Trillia then was real estate is, or technology, internet specifically, is supposed to create transparency, convenience, and cost savings. It did it in every other category of consumer purchase, and it had not yet done it here. And our thesis was, if we can make the transaction less stressful, more certain, more cost effective, twice as many people would do it. Now, what is it, 16 years later, there's six times as many unique visitors searching the top three sites, and only 20% more people transacting. And if you look at why, this is it. Like, this is the roller coaster that people go on. Everyone has spent a lot of time on Zillow and Trulia and Redfin and Realtor because it's aspirational and it's, it's fun to think about where you could live and what your life could be like in the, in the backyard and the home office or the shed out back where you'd store your children. Uh, but when you actually start getting into the transaction, it's really scary and uncertain and costly and opaque. And a lot of people actually never dive in. And the people who do, very few make it to the other side, and those who do, it's very anticlimactic, right? They started with a dream and an aspiration, and they end up getting it six months later, but they almost lost their sanity in the process. And we thought, if we have our, our CFO is from, was the CEO VP of Finance and Lyft, and an Uber before that, and like them, we think there's an opportunity to turn a lot more of these people that want to transact into people who can transact. And so, and, and the way to do that in the marketplace is to create liquidity. Right? Um, and any marketplace, any efficient marketplace, whether it's the stock market or eBay or now Amazon, the, what you have is demand and supply and you have you know, um, enough of both that you have a constant liquid, liquid transaction. We do not have that, obviously, in real estate. Right? There's so much friction and cost and inconvenience and uncertainty. You have a lot more demand than you do like, the ability to you know, uh, fulfill that demand. So what we looked at when we, when we looked at the opportunity was, okay, there's all these people that want to buy. A big part of the problem with not being able to get over the, the, the hump is that two thirds of people that are buying are also selling. Americans are equity rich, cash poor, and cut poor, right? And so you play the chicken and egg game of, do I sell my house first to move in with the in-laws? You can sell your house right now in literally three days, give or take but then you'd be homeless, and you'd still be a contingent buyer because you'd still have a mortgage contingency, and you'd be bid out by somebody else that doesn't have one or doesn't need one, right? And so the way we sort of thought about how do you create liquidity in a marketplace, well, you usually fake liquidity <laughs> in a creative way. Um, the way we did that at Trulia, for example, was we, our sort of liquidity that was on the demand side was SEO. Like, we were the first platform that would actually take advantage of SEO in, um, in the, uh, in the real estate space. Zillow did it with Zestimate and PR, right? That's how we built the demand side uh, of, of the marketplace. We had supply, which were listings and data, and then demand came, the more demand we got, the more supply we got, the more supply we got, the more demand we have. So the question of the two-sided marketplace is how do you get liquidity? 
Uh, and what we do effectively to create liquidity in the market is we make all buyers cash buyers. Our first product, which, is, which originally was called the trade-in, is now called the home swap, was focused on taking the two-thirds of people who have a ton of equity in their home, more than ever now post-COVID, uh, but don't have a lot of time and don't have a lot of cash. And we let them buy their new home. We are a lender. We lend them not only the mortgage, but all of the money they need for down payment, to repair the old home, to make the payments on the old home. Uh, and what we do effectively is send them into the market with their real estate agent as an all cash institutional buyer. And then they can win bidding wars, they can you know, they have all the leverage. And then once they get an accepted offer, we just come in and figure out how to finance it. We're giving you your mortgage, we're giving you the down payment. What's different about what we're doing, and the way we're, why we're able to do this in Wells Fargo is not, or does not, uh, or any big bank or mortgage company, including Rocket and Bank of America, is that they'll all approve you for a mortgage, but they'll assume that you're going to close or sell your old house and close before they'll fund theirs. So we're funding you, the entirety of your new home before you even list it in your old home. And we're using data science to underwrite not only you, but your old home, and lending the money out of your old home. So you can buy a new home and move in. And as soon as you move out, we've this is basically how our contractors come in, get the house ready to list, and your agent lists it, and you get 100% of the upside. And you already own your old home, you're moving into your new home. If it takes a month to sell your old home or six months to sell your old home, you're not in it. You don't have to wait. You don't lift the repairs and showings. You still get 100% of the upside on your house. You, you said a lot there. I did. And <laughs> you said it kind of fast, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Um, but basically, um, it's really, in, 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 we've been talking about um, this morning, this current housing market. The housing market's been frenzy for the last yep. year, and on and off for the last eight, ten years. Um, it's, it's been crazy to be a buyer. People yep. get outbid again and again. And if you have a home and you're trying to buy a new home, yep. it is impossible. You either get in a self market situation. I did a story about six months ago about um, Guy who sold his home because he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to be a contingency buyer. Yep. So he sold his home, um, no problem there. Yep. Now he's a buyer. He doesn't have to have a contingency. He doesn't have to make the sale contingent on selling the home. He couldn't find a home for more than a year. By then, the prices had gone up to over a million dollars. Where was he living? Um, South Orange County. No, but where did he live? Sold his home. Oh, he was living. Um, I think they had they rented an apartment. Yeah. Double exactly. room. Yeah. So it, it was it was horrible, right? So this is this is the solution for that, no question. Um, so um, Th think about it this way: the, 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 so, so the analogy that I use is, I think home buying and selling in five to ten years looks a lot more like renting one on Airbnb. What Airbnb is created liquidity. There wasn't a market for somebody else's bedroom or somebody else's house. There was on Craigslist, but it was a sort of black, cheap, gray market. Um, but they created supply and demand, and they created security and safety by creating payment, the payment platform. We're effectively at the payment platform for for all my time, right? Because we can do all the underwriting, figure out how to finance the new buyer, so we can move in to the new home. All of there's been a lot of focus on I buying and invest, institutional investing, and that's great. Your, to your point, like having an institutional buyer buy your house at a discount, you can be able to walk away is great, but you're still contingent on the mortgage as a buyer, and you're still in the home. Right? The problem isn't selling your home today. The problem is buying a home and being in it and not having to rent. So, so walk us through just really briefly. What is the process of, of buying a home? There's this cash buyer. You become a cash buyer, even though you're a finance buyer. Yep. You're a mortgage company, correct? We are a tech company uh, that is also a licensed lender. Uh, and so, yes, we provide your new mortgage, right? So, if you go to Knock.com, we're in 72 markets now. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you would start applying for a home swap or not go, which is our first time we're product, much like you would any other lending product. The difference is. We're not only going to approve you for your new loan, same competitive rate that we get anywhere else. Um, we're also going to underwrite your house. We're going to ask you about the condition of your home, what's in it. We're going to see all the public data about it. Uh, ultimately, your agent will take a bunch of photos and write a description of you will on our app. Uh, and we're going to say, okay, you have two hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in your home. We think it's going to take you thirty days to sell it. We're going to lend you one hundred twenty thousand back, interest free for six months. Here you are. You're a cash offer. Go to the market. Let us know when you get an accepted offer, and we'll put the wheels in motion to finance that house for you holistically, not just the mortgage, but also the down payment. And, and the, does the mortgage close before you buy the house, or can it be the same time? So if you find a home, once we've pre-approved you for the sale home swap, you're going to go to the closing table. We're going to fund at the closing table not only the mortgage but also your down payment, which we're lending you out of your own home. You now own that home. You're paying. 
you know, um, you're paying the mortgage payments, you're earning equity in that home, you're not paying rent, uh, you move in, and as soon as you're out, we've already identified with you what work needs to get done, it's usually paint carpet, um, the contractors descend, they're our network, we pay them when you're happy, uh, and then your agent puts the home on the market and it sells three days later. <laughs> but you're already in your new house, so if it takes 30 days or three days or three months, you're somewhat indifferent. And you provide a backup offer which buy the house if it doesn't sell in six months if the market slows down. Correct. Correct. And we provide you a lot of guidance along the way to like inform you of like what else is happening in the market, what you know other properties are listed or sold in your in your area. If you didn't do some of the repairs we suggested and it's still there a month later, we may suggest you do those repairs, it will help you with it, and pay for it, and then you know, we just help you as much as possible. How, how many homes have you had to buy through the backup? One. And how many transactions? Uh, this year, almost 900, just this year alone. 